adjust my mic here a bit. Uh, hey guys, Thundershot here, uh, or Evan Brown, what the fuck you want to call me, I don't care. Uh, back with today with a new video. Uh, you can see the title, something I'm somewhat experienced in, uh, which is casting slash holding tournaments. Uh, I've, hold, I've held different tournaments, Mo uh, most of them have been on my YouTube page, I've helped other people run tournaments, I've helped cast, I've learned from the best how to cast, and today I'm just making a video on how to do that type of stuff. Uh, so, with casting, the most important thing you have to think about is what's happening and how you can keep the viewer engaged. Because, obviously, if you just commentate on what's happening in a monotone voice, like I can be like, oh, look, um, player A is pushing B site. Will he get all these picks? It's not going to be like, saying, oh, my God, player B is about to push his B site. Uh, uses his E to get in and then go from there. Like, you know, you commentate and you add flavor to it. The job with the commentator isn't to tell the viewer what's happening. It's to make the viewer more engaged in it. Right? Uh, that's my opinion. It's... And you have to be knowledgeable in this uh, game you're commentating. For instance, I would never, ever in my life commentate like a Halo game. Right? I, I don't know the terminology for that game. In the, on the professional side I don't uh, but like if I wanted to commentate uh, Apex game I could do that because I know all the terminology I know the roots I have uh, 900 plus hours in this game I understand what the pro players are doing I'm, I watch almost every tournament sometimes multiple times with different viewer perspectives I watch all the professional live streams and stuff like that so I could commentate that because I understand what's happening but if I try to comment at Halo, it just sounds like I'm coming to any other FPS game, which would be disingenuous to the community, right? And so being knowledgeable in casting is so important to the game, right? Because anyone can cast anything, right? Uh, but it's how well you can cast it, which separates you. For instance, I consider myself a pretty good caster. I don't cast that much because I, uh, you know, Middle. I've been trying to look into Apex casting, but that's a whole different video <laughs> for another time. Um, and then another big thing I know a lot of smaller casters do, or like people just starting the cast or who don't normally cast, uh, um, they mess up a lot of downtime, right? In tournaments, there's downtime, and you as a caster has to fill that downtime. Do you like someone to sit there silently, and that's bad. You don't, you don't sit there silently. You just kind of make a conversation. Now, if you're duo casting, just talk to your duo, right? You, typically, you're probably friends or uh, work buddies or something like that, and you will like honest or talk about the game or something like that. If you're a solo caster, talk about the game at hand, right? Talk about. Uh, Oh my, oh my God! I can't believe he did this. I wonder what their strategy for the next round coming up is gonna be, and stuff like that, right? There's gonna be downtime, and you have to fill that. For instance, I can be like, "What's this say? Uh, it's a what's this say? Oh, I'm casting a violent match, and it's a best of five, and match one just finished, and we're waiting for match two to start, right? And it's my job to fill that time. I can sit there obviously like this." But no one wants to watch that. What they want to watch is, one, you as a commentator's perspective on it. Because assumingly, you have experience in this game uh, at a deeper level than most uh, base level people. Uh, and it keeps people engaged in the eSport. Right? So if it's, it's a, say, it's a TSM versus Sentinels, best of five. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe TSM pulled down uh, in overtime. I wonder how what... What if they're gonna keep the same strategies, or they're gonna try to counter pick more Sentinel strategies in this upcoming round? For instance, maybe putting Sub Rosa on a on a B push instead of an A push, and split push that because that seemed to work against Sentinels. But they uh, elected not to do that multiple rounds in a row. Perhaps they try to force that more heavily in Chromius next bind match. So see something like that, right? Keeps them engaged. Uh, they get your thoughts kind of more personable too and so uh companies want to hire you to cast again uh and then going into kind of for instance i also have like every tournament i've held i've casted in 
so let's just say you're casting uh, and running a tournament. Okay, let's just say you're running a tournament. Running a tournament takes a lot of work. You have to make sure every player knows what's happening, or at least one person on the team who can relate the information to the rest of the team. For instance, I'm not going to force somebody to uh, last minute. Right? I've had mistakes. I've told people times last minute. Everyone's human. They make mistakes. But what's important is the fact that you are vocal about times, vocal about rules. Uh, make sure every player has a rule set and knows the times. Uh, and pay out as fast as possible for every tournament I've ever done. I've paid out day of. Uh, if you if you're uh, like let's say like a bigger tournament, like I don't know, you're running like a hundred thousand dollar tournament. Obviously, payout's not gonna happen right away, but but uh, preferably within a week, right? Because you know that's obviously legal things you have to go through for all that uh, higher cash tournaments. But if you're running a lower like let's say one k or below tournament, you can probably do payout day of to the teams, right? So, preferably, everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. If you just are vocal about everything. And not only that, getting the word out, right? Getting teams in a tournament is so important, and advertising is important. You should, preferably, if running a bigger tournament or that tournament to be successful, you should be spending money on promoting the tournament. Okay? No one's going to... There's so many low-end tournaments in every single game right now but if you are advertising it and you have a decent cash prize people can want to play you can get those professional players to play right because no professional player unless it's like a friend's tournament is going to want to play in your five dollar tournament and the viewership's not going to be good because of that right obviously the more money better the more money you pump into the tournament the better competition you're going to get right but i was to say oh i'm like a high school student who wants to eventually run tournaments or whatever Run some small tournaments, right? And then hopefully get funding for more, right? If you are able to show companies you can run a tournament well, then they will probably notice, right? Like, oh, this guy can help run a tournament and stuff like that. And slowly work up. Like, I ran tournaments or small convention conventions here and there. I've ran tournaments online a bunch. I've talked to or ran a lot of different tournaments. It's not solely about... Um, how well you can uh how much money you have into a tournament because there's so many tournaments that have a lot of money but don't have good running but so many tournaments that don't have much money but are really well ran because they're generally a part of the community and they focus more on the community than the money aspect of it hence the reason they are good and fun tournaments to make like ceo started like that evo started like that uh early apex hard like that early overwatch hard like that every esport has these early on tournaments that who knows maybe your tournament you're running right now could be the next world of like league of legends worlds type of deal right who knows and so what i say to tournament organizers who are like oh, i don't know it's not a whole lot of money involved just do it you might not see success this tournament or the next one or the next one or the next one but you will slowly start seeing more viewership because people will start noticing you and word of mouth will get out. Your first tournament is going to suck ass. Okay, mine did. Mine still do. Okay, considering I'm running production, casting, all the TL stuff, which is tournament organizer stuff, by myself, it's unsustainable. But I keep on doing it because I know it is unsustainable, but it's sustainable for now, right? Does that make sense? Like, it's unsustainable in the long run, but... If I really, really push for it, I could obviously run a big tournament, but I'm more con I'm more content. You know me. <laughs> uh, it's fun. And so if you're a tournament organizer, don't be um, discouraged if your first tournament doesn't get a huge viewership, right? Especially me. Like, I've done my f – I'm getting below 100 views on my tournament. It's fine. I thought I ran the tournament really well. That's what's important too, right? So when it comes to tournaments, make sure you have a good caster as well. The casters will make or break a tournament sometimes. Uh, for instance, my Rising Flash tournament, I casted that. I, people enjoyed it. I was a good caster. Uh, I consider myself a pretty good caster for the amount of experience I have. Uh, so why... 
why would you get a bad caster, right? Obviously, if you're yourself, like, oh, if I'm not a good caster. See if a buddy wants to cast, okay? Uh, something like that. Someone who you think could be good at speech, okay? There's so many casters out there that would help smaller tournaments for a small fee, if if any. Uh, I can't name it off the top of my head, but right now, because, you know, it's a little late at night. Uh, but, yeah. So, it's kind of a, sorry for this, like, mis m mishmashed video of, like, stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of, like, how to run a tournament, what tournament running's like, how to cast, and stuff like that. Stuff I'm more experienced with. And if you guys want more content like this, let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.